This lesson is all about constructing a gene map. Now a gene map is a list of the genes on a chromosome in the order and the approximate relative distance each gene is from another gene. And we can do that if we have something called the recombination frequency data, or sometimes we call it the crossover frequency data, or we've even seen it called the linkage data. Essentially what these, this crossover frequency or recombination frequency is, is a percentage of time that we get crossing over occurring um, during meiosis between two genes on a chromosome. And I'm not going to get into how we figure out that percentage in this video. Um, it's a lengthy explanation. It's a, it's a whole other video. So for this one, we've, we've got the recombination frequency. We've got the genes. We just need to figure out where these genes are. So in this example, we've got genes A, B, C, and D. And they lie somewhere along a hypothetical chromosome. So I'm just going to draw a number line here to represent the hypothetical chromosome from one end to the other. And the distance, the length of this chromosome is equivalent to the highest percentage recombination frequency between any two genes. And in this particular example, I see that right here between genes A and B, we have 27% crossover frequency. So what that means is that gene A is at one end of the chromosome, gene B is at the other end of the chromosome, and relative to one another, they are 27 units apart. Now the units we use here, we don't measure this in millimeters or micrometers or nanometers or anything like that because it's not an absolute distance. It's a relative distance relative to other genes on the chromosome. So there's a, a made-up unit here. We just call it a map unit. So 1% equals 1 map unit. So 27% is 27 units apart from the chromosome. Now I need to find out where gene C will be found. So I can compare A and C, and I can see that it's 13%. And I can see that B and C are 14%. So that tells me that gene C is somewhere in between A and B. I'm going to put gene C right about here. Now, I'm not drawing this perfectly to scale, but what I can see is that there are 13 units between the beginning of the chromosome here and C, and there are 14 units between C and the other end of the chromosome, where B is found. And that, not coincidentally, adds up to 27, um, because 13 plus 14 is equal to 27, the distance from A to C plus the distance from B to C would be the entire length of the chromosome. Now it's a little bit trickier to figure out where gene D is going to be found because we've got the, the information for gene C and D, it tells us is 5%. So that tells me there are two possible locations for gene D. I could find it to the left of gene C or I could find it to the right of gene C. And in order to figure out which one of those is the case, I need to compare either A and D or B and D. And in this table, I haven't got A and D, but I've got B and D at 19%. So if gene D is five units away from gene C, that could put it either here or here. But if it were in this location right here, it would be less than 14 units from D. And it's 19 units from B. So that tells me it can't be in this position. So it must be right here. So let's just make sure the math works out. From here to here would have to be five units, which would make the distance from here all the way down to here, 14 plus five, which would be 19 units. And 19 units is what we have at the table. So therefore, I can tell that the order of genes in this chromosome from left to right is A, D, C, B. And I can see the relative distance between those genes um, in this diagram. All right, so that's how you construct a gene map. Let's take a look at some exam questions to see how we do those. So here we have crossover frequencies, also known as recombination frequencies, for some genes on Drosophila chromosome number one. So I'm just going to write out what these genes are because they're kind of hidden in here. It's kind of hard to see. But we've got white eyes, which is gene W. We've got facet eyes. I don't even know what that is, but that's gene F. Uh, we've got kinase eyes, gene E, and we've got ruby eyes, gene R. So those are our four genes that are found on a chromosome. So I can go ahead and make my number line here, make my hypothetical chromosome from one end to the other. And I'm going to look for the highest number I can see between any two genes, and the highest number I see is 6%. So that tells me that I can put at 
either end of the chromosome, the W and the R. And I know that the distance between those is 6 math units. All right, 6.0 math units. Let's get our digits here. Because we do have the decimals there. All right, so if I want to compare uh, another set of genes, let's look at F and R. Uh, that's the next highest one at 4.5%. So that would tell me that gene F would be 4.5 units from R. So the logical place to put it would be about here. So I'll put gene F here. And between F and R, we have 4.5 units. Now I should mention that it is possible that F could be way over here, over on this side somewhere. It could be four and a half units way out there. If we didn't have W and F to compare, it could be a bigger number. Uh, we just don't have it. But we do have W and F. W and F in our table is 1.5. So that's how I knew it would be in this location right here, because that tells me the distance here is 1.5 units plus 4.5 gives me the total of 6 that I'm looking for. So that tells me that I'm I can be confident that F is between W and R and not off on the side there. All right, let's look at uh, the next one. What do we have left? We still have to position E. So I can compare E to any of the others. I can compare E and W. I could compare E and F. Well, E and F are two and a half units apart. So that could put E somewhere out here. Or it could put E somewhere over here. What is it, two and a half units between... E and F, so it could put E somewhere over here. Well, to know which one it is, I'd have to compare E and R, and I don't have E and R in my table. But what I do have is I've got W and E, and I can see that W and E are four units apart. That wouldn't work if I put E over here. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be far enough away. So that tells me that E must be in the, this location right here. The distance between F and E I've already established. F and E was 2.5 units. 2.5 plus 1.5 would make 4 units between W and E, and it is 4 units between W and E. So I can know that the distance is W, F, or sorry, the order is W, F, E, R. Now, what I'm being asked for in the question is E and R. That's why I wasn't given in the table. So I can figure out E and R just by simply taking this number, 2.5, subtracting it from the 4.5, and that will give me the remaining distance right here. So 4.5 minus 2.5 is 2.0. So I know it's 2.0 units between E and R, and I have that answer to choose from. So that's how we figure that one. Let's look at one more exam. Example. So here we've got a gene map of chromosomes of Schizosoma mansoni. I don't even know what that is. It's some sort of blood fluke that causes chronic illness. Some of the genes on chromosome 5 and the distance between them are shown in the table below. So this isn't all the genes, but this is genes 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'll go ahead and do this the way I've done the others. I'll break my number line, my hypothetical chromosome. And I can see that the longest distance I have here is 24.3. 24.3 between genes 2 and 3. So I can put gene 2 at one end of the chromosome, gene 3 at the other. And my distance between them is 24.3. Now I can position the, the other ones in between. And what I can see here is that between 2 and 4, I've got 8.2 units. So that could put uh, gene number four somewhere over here or somewhere over here. It could be further out. Uh, however, because we've got two and four and three and four to compare, 8.2 and 16.1, if you add those two up, they come up to 24.3. So that tells me that gene number four has got to be about here. Again, not drawing the scale. But that would make this eight math units. 8.2 math units, and this would then be 16.1 math units, and that would add up to the 24.3. So gene number four 
is going to be found in this location. I still need to find G number one. Now for G number one, I only have one piece of data. I've only got 13 units between one and three. So it might be logical to put it, we'll say right about here, that would make this G1, 13.0 units from G3. I would just find 16.1 minus 13.1, 16.1 here minus 13.1, and that would give me the distance between 4 and 1 right there, and that would give me a distance of 3.1. So that certainly would be an acceptable answer for this. However, based on this data, there's actually another answer that could be correct, because there's nothing to say that gene number one is between genes two and three. Gene number one could be on the other side of gene three. This number line could go well beyond here because we don't have a comparison between two and one. Two and one may have been a very large number. We don't know what it is because it's not given, which means we could actually find gene one way over here. And if gene one is way over there and 13 units away from gene number three, then this distance right here could be 13.0, which means we, to find out the distance between gene four and gene one, we would have to go uh, gene four to three is 16.1 plus 13.0 more. So we could actually get a second answer for this one of 16.1 plus 13 would be 29.1 math units, and that would also be just as legitimate an answer as the 3.1, and on this particular exam, they did accept either of those two answers. <laughs>